first thing I want you to look for is your polar grid tool and that may be hidden behind this line segment tool or any of these other options here. I'm going to hold down shift while I draw a grid. You see I have this set up for eight which I like because the granny square has four corners but there are also things that go uh, up and down left to right. If you do not have the right number of segments I'm going to undo that. I can option click. Make sure your width and height are the same so it's square. You can have the number of concentric circles you want and the number of dividers you want. And I would say it's a good rule that for motifs you should have double the number of points on your motif at least because there's generally stuff that's centered within each repeat in the motif. So I have eight for my granny square. And that's just going to draw that for me. And I'm going to go, going to go up to view, guides, and I'm going to say make guide. And that's going to turn whatever I had selected from an editable item into a guide that I can snap to. I'm also going to make sure my smart guides are turned on and that snap to point is turned on. And that, this is my um, layers palette. I'm going to also have this be my foundation row. Um, and that's this the basic setup. This guide will disappear anytime I am not viewing that layer. Another thing I want you to look at is your preferences, general. You may want to turn this off when you're not doing crochet charts, but or actually turn it on when you're not doing crochet charts, but for this type of work I like to have scale, stroke, and effects turned off and I'll show you why. I'm going to press OK. It's turned on right now. I'm going to grab some of my symbols and I'm going to grab a double crochet and a single crochet because that's what we're going to be using today. I'm going to select these and break them from the symbol library. So right now they're linked up to what's in my symbol library here and so I can't really modify them. Uh, if I break the, the link then I can modify them as I need to. So watch what happens if I scale this double crochet up all the strokes get thicker so it no longer looks like it relates to this single crochet. I'm going to undo that. I'll go back to my preferences, general, and turn this off and when I make this bigger the stroke stays identical. It doesn't change at all and I want that. That way I can make symbols bigger and smaller and it always looks like it was drawn by the same person at the same time. So go ahead and do that. So I've um, taken these symbols out because I, I broke the link now each stroke of this double crochet is separate. I'm going to go ahead and group them and I do that by selecting everything and command G. This is a, a Mac. You um, might need to use control anywhere I say command and um, alt anywhere I say option for a PC. So we're on our foundation row. I don't need these. For my granny squares, I like a loop in the center. So I'm going to select, um, let me just make that double. I'm going to select my ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down option, and that's going to allow me to draw from the center out. And I'm going to hold down shift, which is going to constrain it to a circle. I'm going to draw my foundation chain. I'll go to my strokes. I want my weight to be 1.5 and I like to make this a dashed line and if you've never played with this you can set different dashes, gaps and they don't have to match and you can make it as complicated and interesting as you like. Click off so you can see it. Obviously that's overkill for what we need but I'm just going to go ahead and set this to my favorite default which is a two-point dash and if you don't specify 
it just puts its own gap in and that's fine for me. That's my foundation row. If I go back to my layers and I make a new layer, round one, I'm going to grab these two symbols and I'm going to drag them onto round one. I'm going to lock my foundation chart. I don't need to do anything else to it. One thing to keep in mind when you're making your um, layers, if you double click, right now I have blue selected here and yellow would work too. It's not going to preview, but be careful what color is selected here. If your symbols are black and you choose gray or black, then these little guidelines that tell you when you have something selected are going to blend in and it makes it much harder to see. So try to pick colors that will stand out for you when you select them and then pick a different color for each layer. So you can see foundation was blue, my round one is red, and I'll, I'll keep going in that manner. So since we're doing a granny square, I want to have a cluster of four double crochets. I'm going to put this here, I'm going to click the letter R, and that's going to select my rotation tool. I'm going to click right here, this is where I'm going to originate my rotation from. And I'm going to just grab this and pull it out a little bit. Okay. So I've just rotated it along the, the center axis here. Then I'm going to click the R tool again and click in the middle. I'm going to hold down Option this time, and that is going to allow me to make a duplicate. So the same one stayed there, I didn't touch it. You know you have um, the right thing selected when your arrow changes. Do that again because I'm going to select both of these. R again. Click in the middle. And now, see how my cursor changes when I click on Option? This is all most likely on a PC. Just pull it over. And now I have a cluster of four stitches. I'm going to go ahead and with my rotate tool just bring these in a little bit closer. That's my cluster four. With all of these selected, I'm going to option click on the center point. It's going to bring up a dialog box, and since I know that I'm going to have four of these clusters around a circle, 360, which is how many um, degrees you have in a circle, divided by four is 90. So I'm going to put 90 in here, 90, I'm going to click copy. And that left our first cluster and duplicated it. Now if I Command D, It'll do the same process all over again. Command D twice. So now I have my four clusters, and the only thing I have left to do is to create my chain four or five. I mean, you know, you can do your granny squares how you like. Let's do chain four. So I do two chains. I'm going to option click. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. You can also um, copy and paste if you like, Command C, Command V, but I find that the option drive works really beautifully. I'm going to select all four, click the letter R again, option click, and copy. Command D, Command D. The last step in this first round is to add a slip stitch. I'm going to drag out my slip stitch. I'm going to break the link to my library. And then I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so I can really see what I'm doing. And I select the letter E, that's this transform tool, and I can really get that down there and nudge it into place. And let me show you another little set of settings that you might want to look at for nudging. In your preferences, 
here it is under general so we're back here I have my keyboard increment set to this ridiculously small amount you'll want to play around with it the the default is much higher so let's say I have this set to 0 0.05 and I click this it's gonna move that little guy around quite a bit and there's really no way to finely tune where that item goes. If I set my increment to something like 0 0.0011, which is what I have, then it moves just the tiniest amount. And then when I want a bigger increment, I can hold down shift and it moves 10 times that amount. So that gives you that really, I want to move things pretty far option, and I just need to nudge it a tiny little bit. So Illustrator, Preferences, General. That's also where we had that scale stroke and effect keyboard increment. Good. Alrighty. So I've created round one. I now need to create round two. I'm just going to duplicate it. And then I want to lock round one because I don't need anything on that round and I want to rename this round two and I want to give it another color that will stand out. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and what we're going to do is select this and I'm going to hold down option, no not option, <laughs> I'm going to select these and I'm going to hold down shift because I want to move these exactly 45 degrees. See how this is remaining in alignment here. I want that and then I want to take this corner and I want to move this. Oops. You have to hold down shift after you start moving. That does what it was doing to me. Shift Start moving, then hold down shift. And bring this guy. That's in place. Shift will move um, 45 degree increments. So you can do straight to the side, straight up, or any of these angles. And I just want to get that kind of matchy-matchy all around. And I have my first cluster on each row. I need a second cluster and a chain two, so I can just do that like this. I'm holding down, I selected these, I hold down Option and Shift. And it looks like I need to just do a little bit of tweaking in here because I'm not getting a nice corner. So what I'll do is, we're just going to set this up for this round and then each subsequent round will be a little bit easier because we'll have our nice corners all set up. So since I'm making some tweaks here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these. I'll show you why not as bad as it sounds because we'll be able to just rotate this around so that looks pretty good and we can do let's make these go down just a little bit I'm holding down shift to nudge it 10 and then rotate tool option click and copy it 90 degrees around, copy that, copy that. And then I just need to add my slip stitch. I'm going to option, drag it up. So when I hold down option and drag that little square up to that layer, I can lock this layer and this one goes right there round two. And, oops, I didn't save this. Round two. Make it yellow. I think okay. Good. So 
So now we'll do a round three. Round three. Let's make this one some shade of green. And we're going to do something similar. We'll go ahead and grab this. I'm going to just shift, drag it up. And I want to get that nice corner there. Shift, drag. You'll see the smart guides that I turn on are telling you when things are in alignment so you can uh, sort of get a feel for how neat your, your chart is looking. And now I want to be kind of in alignment with oops, what's already there and that's maybe a, I can nudge that into place. So it looks like all we need is to option shift drag over one more cluster chain two. Make sure that's nice and centered. Option click for the rotate. And we'll copy that. Then command D. Command D. And we have three full rounds. And I actually think that my slip stitches should be over a little bit. I think they should go here because you would start with a double crochet. And I think this one can go here. And that's perfect. So now we have a chart with three rounds and a foundation row. We can start going in and colorizing. I'm going to select my foundation chain and I want to make sure I have the stroke selected over here then I can make that my foundation chain color. To make this easier to see I'm going to turn off the guides and I just do that with command semicolon. There we go. Go back to my layers. I will lock the foundation row. Unlock round one. I'm going to option click on this little preview on round one and that selects everything in that round. And if we go in and I unselect my little slip stitch. Um, a slip stitch is a circle so it's only got a fill, it doesn't have a stroke on it. And I think it might also still be attached to its symbol so we'll check that in a second. I want to select the stroke and I want to make round one magenta. Let's see if this is still attached to its symbol. No, nope, it's good. So then we can also make this magenta. And I want to do the same thing for the third round. I keep the second round black. So I go to my layer. I lock this layer, unlock this, I option click to select everything. I'm going to unselect my little slip stitch and I'll make this magenta. And then I'll select my slip stitch and I'll make that magenta. Now I have my alternating rows of color and my foundation. What if I decide that pink just isn't flying for me? Well, if I select my direct selection tool, and it's important that you do this because you might have things grouped together, and if they're grouped and some have fills and some have strokes, this won't work exactly correctly. So direct selection tool, select something you like, then select same, in this case stroke color, and it's going to select, oops, I forgot to unlock and we want to do that right. So select, same, stroke color, and that selects everything in the document that has that stroke color that is not locked. Make sure that the stroke is selected here, and then we can make it a whole different color. Let's do it. 
take a look at that. Perfect. And now we're going to select the A tool again. A, get to direct selection. And now we're going by fill color. So we want to select the same fill color. And we'll do that same green. I think that was the same green. Yep. And now I've changed my pink and black chart to green and black in just a couple of quick steps. Last thing I want to point out is um, a pretty helpful tip if you tend to group things. For sure your symbols are going to be grouped if it's made up of multiple lines. And I do like these to be lines for that scaling thing I talked about in the beginning. If I, if I convert these, if I go to um, object and expand it so that instead of being a series of lines, it's actually a single shape, then when I make it larger and smaller, the stroke will appear to get larger and smaller. And that's, I don't think that that produces quite as nice an effect. So these are, um, these are grouped elements. If I want to edit something in a group, I can just double click it. And then everything else goes gray, and I get this little path up here. And I can go ahead and just move something around. And when I escape out, it's moved, but I've maintained my grouping. I haven't lost that. I'm going to undo that because that just looks silly. And I'm back to where I was. Yep. Undo that. So that is your crochet chart. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and please feel free to leave comments with your tips and tricks.